Hello everyone in YouTube land. I've been going a little bit 360 crazy using the Samsung Gear 360. This is it. I've already done a first impressions um, little video, but I want to talk a little bit about my, now that I've had it for two weeks, I want to talk about what I really think about it and I want to talk about the workflow and I want to try to make this as, as quick as possible. First of all, um, it is a 4K video that does not render it. I mean, it's 4K when you stitch the two of these together. The two videos, you're going to get a video off the front, you're going to get a video off the back. When you stitch them together, it is a 4K big piece of video, but all you're ever going to see at one particular time through your virtual reality world that you're looking at, whether it be on the glasses or on a computer screen, is a small portion of that. Probably something like, I'm guessing, maybe a 480p type version. So it's going to be fuzzy, a little bit fuzzy, not as sharp as you're used to seeing with GoPro video or with you know, other 1080p video. Does that discourage you from wanting to use it? Wanting to use it? No, I think it's a super useful tool. I think the video is pretty darn great for what it is now. I think it's going to have to get to a point where it's probably 8K uh, stitched together before we get something that's more like 720p that we're seeing in the window, which is going to be ultimately what's going to be really satisfying. So how does it work? It works great. I have no problems with it. It's super easy to navigate. I've already done a video about that too. So let me talk about... Uh, what some things you can do with it's pretty unique and pretty cool. Number one, you can hang it upside down. Uh, I bought this Fat Gecko, which is awesome. I'm going to do a review on this. This is a, um, it holds four pounds, so it's much more powerful than any other suction mount that I have. But I've been sticking this to my windshield, doing some driving videos with the camera hanging upside down. And so when you shoot with a camera hanging upside down from your windshield for like a driving cam or something, or say you want to use this for a security cam, then you're going to have to turn the video upside down. Fortunately, that's an easy thing to do. So when we'll talk about the workflow here, which what I want to point out is, you, is if you don't have the cell phone, one of the modern Samsung cell phones, you're going to have to use something like Action Director, which is a free software package from Cyberlink that is given to you by Samsung. So you can go and download Action Director, which is a huge software package, and it only runs on a PC, unfortunately. But it's, it's pretty awesome in that... When you import the videos that you shoot from this, which are these, what, what the resultant video is going to be two big rounded bits of video, okay? Two big round circles that have to be stitched together into a 4K seamless rectangle of video, right? Which looks very bizarre uh, when you see it in, in, a, in a video editor. But to, to do that conversion, all you have to do is drag those, those video clips into the Action Director uh, media window and it automatically starts doing it. Now, is, is this something that happens automatically and very fast? No, it happens very slow. And some of the demos I've seen look like on a cell phone that has some way to do it. The modern Samsung cell phones that, I, that I'm not ready to buy yet, I have an older one, uh, so I, I am gonna upgrade this September, I think. But the older Samsung cell phones can do this thing, I guess, gather pretty quickly. But on my PC, which is a very stout PC, 32 gigs of RAM and a Core i7, at least I think second generation processor. It takes a long time for these videos to stitch together. But you know, most people are just going to shoot quick clips. They're going to shoot 20 second clips, 30 second clips. I shoot a lot, a lot of prolonged video, commentary video and, and, and driving videos and stuff like that. So it takes a good long while. I mean, you have to just sort of bring it in and let it start its conversion process to stitch it together and then go eat a sandwich or go watch your favorite television show or do it at night and you get up in the morning it's all converted. Once that video is converted, then you pull it onto a timeline in Action Director and then you apply either color adjustments, you can adjust sharpness, you can do a whole lot of contrast, brightness, all these things that you would do in any other video editing program you can even like if you've hung if you've hung it upside down and shot your upside down video, you can flip it, you know, a couple times and it will be the right way. And then what you do is you go and you click what's called the produce button. And the produce button under file, you pull down to produce. Uh, this will allow you to export the video. Now, what you want one thing you want to be aware of and sure of is that when you're shooting your video, you shoot it in the highest resolution. At least that's in my in my opinion. If you want to get your best quality, you want to be shooting in the 4K version, which is like 3,800 pixels. But you want to be shooting at highest resolution, and then you want to naturally export it at that highest resolution. And then once it has been produced and once it's been exported as a stitched together file with all your edits, 
I believe you can probably go direct to YouTube with it unless you want to edit it additionally. Now, I do like to edit mine additionally in Adobe Premiere. I like to maybe put titles on it. I like to cut out the bad parts. It's a little cumbersome to cut out the bad parts and do all the editing you want to in Action Directory. It can be done, but I just prefer to do that in the uh, Adobe Premiere uh, atmosphere. The one thing that's really cool about doing it that way is let's say there is let's say you want to start the video clip, you know, let's say that you're pointing at something, but all of a sudden you decide, well, I would rather the, the action be directed over more of this way. There is a an effect in Adobe Premiere Pro called uh, offset. If you apply apply the offset to the clip, you cut the clip anywhere you want to, you apply the offset, you can drag left and right using the left and right uh, navigation in the offset effect to recenter the video. And it looks really great when you recenter the video. So once you have your all your edits, your bad places cut out, and your titles on there if you want to put titles on there, you've changed your offset if you care to change your offset, you've done some color enhancement or whatever you want to in Adobe Premiere, then you want to export it. And I just export it as a 4K video, and I turn on this virtual, that it is virtual reality button, and uh, it asks you, is it stereoscopic or anything? And I always choose no because it's not stereoscopic. Even though you've got two pieces of video, it's not like they're shooting it forward and you're trying to get a stereo effect. It is, it is actually a, what, two-dimensional bit of video that you're watching. But you can turn your head left and right with it and see it. So I export those, these videos. And since this, I usually export from Action Director at 50 megs per second, I go ahead and do that also in YouTube, which makes some very big files uh, which take a long time to upload. I might experiment with taking some data out of that and maybe uh, export it 30 megs a second and just see. You know, the thing is you're dealing with 4K video that's gonna be downsized, it's gonna be recompressed in YouTube. So I'm, it's just at least my practice at this point to give YouTube the best quality I can give it. Since I'm shooting, typically I'm shooting I probably, I think at 50 megs per second, or maybe sometimes it's more like 30, 32, 35 megs per second. There is a place in the properties you can go and check and see. That's an action director, and I'll kind of put that on the screen there so you can see what you do to get to that. Still, I do I always do the export at 4K, 50 megs per second, and then I always export my edited version from Premiere at 4K, 50 megs per second. And then that gives me, hopefully, the best quality video that goes up to YouTube. YouTube will then, of course, recompress it to whatever its specs are, and you end up with whatever you get there. And of course, you have to watch, you know, if you're going to be doing this, you want to let people know that these are 360 videos, be sure you put it in the description. Maybe you say it as you start to do the video. I'm starting to try to, the beginning of the video, say, hey folks, this is a 360 degree video. If you have Google Chrome as your browser and you're using YouTube, you can go up and you can click on the video and you can pull it left and right up and down. So these are just some tips I guess I'm, I'm giving you to let you know what you're facing. It's not like it's huge. It's like it's a hard thing to do. Sometimes there's a waiting um, game that you have to wait for the, the files to stitch together, particularly if you're shooting big, long ones. And, uh, and then you're going to have to, if you're going to do those fine editing points that you don't want to use Action Director for, uh, you know, I like to edit on my Mac. I have to do the stitching on my PC. I'm sure that at some point Cyberlink or Samsung will probably make a Mac version of uh, Action Director. And, and all of these points I'm making might not be even be an issue for you if you have a modern one of the last, you know, in the last year or so Samsung phone that will allow you to do the 360 app. So I'll be doing some more videos. You can go see some other people have been doing some videos on how that's done. I hope this has been helpful for somebody. If you have any questions, let me know. Peace to all who watch the channel. Subscribe to the channel if you like. I, I do try to answer questions. It's becoming harder and harder as I get more and more subscribers and more and more. But yeah, I'm giving it a shot here, folks. Thanks. You're going to love this little camera. Uh, the one thing I will say in the end is, so it's, it's a little fuzzy. It's still not great. It's still, it's still for, for this price, I think I paid 340 bucks for it. For this price, it's the best thing going. I mean, you could go watch the GoPro videos where they have six GoPros synced up and linked up to a big cube type thing like this. And you'll see that that is far superior video because I think ultimately you end up with like 8K video doing that. That's what's going to have to happen with one of these things before it really becomes the cam to use. But that GoPro option is so expensive. It's like 5000 bucks to buy that array. So uh, for the rest of us, for the ones who can't afford the six linked together GoPros or whatever, maybe something new is getting ready to happen too. I don't know. But for now, that's pretty darn cool. you got a cue ball type 
uh, lightweight, easy to operate camera uh, that you can do some great video with and it's, it's great fun. I think particularly this is gonna be one of my cool things that I use for a car in the car driving cam. If I'm in heavy traffic and stuff, I like to have these things on just in case you get in a fender bender or something. Um, I don't know, this is a ton of good things I'm gonna do with them. I'm gonna go to some, some beautiful spots and shoot some video uh, that I've been wanting to share in 360 for a long time. So thanks for watching people, bye-bye.